difficult to quantify now is how sort of grappling has influenced your coaching. So you're a judo athlete. You're now joined everyone, it seems, that's been doing BJJ. I thought I was late. And then, and then since I've come, like so many other people are joining because, and, and I'm happy because it's just, I'm unhappy because it's not the people that I, whose ear I chew off. And I tell everyone that I that asked me about it, that they should go and do it. But everyone seems okay. to be doing it. So it's really good. Is there something from judo or BJJ that's uh, influenced like either as, as rugby players as the skill or um, your strength and conditioning, how you go about training your athletes? Yeah, lots of things, lots of things. I guess, you know, my, my background in grappling is, is I started at university after taking time out of rugby and time to kind of recover from, from shoulder surgeries. Judo helped you recover. And so not, judo didn't help me recover. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Is it not more, it's just as brutal. Oh, yeah. When I started, so I had, you know, I finished rugby and then I had like, three years I think of just getting my shoulder right um after surgery there was two two surgeries that were just not successful and that came down to strength and conditioning it's a big part hmm. of why um I'm a strength coach and then and then I played a year of uni rugby just to make mates because I was I got my shoulder at a point where I could play sort of you know I could play rugby just not the level that I wanted to play but then after that I was kind of like all right I've made mates rugby's good but I want I want a new challenge and yeah judo certainly was that for me and there's lots of things I learned, like, like, you know, I was involved in, you know, in judo well, it's, it's like BJJ, you know, there's sparring, but I, when I got to a certain level, obviously after a certain time, this wasn't straight away, God no, but you could go to the national um, center for Randori, which is sparring with mm -hmm. the people that are fighting for Great Britain, which is just another level. So things like work rate, I mean, to go through the process of, of getting your judo black belt, there's a technical way to get your black belt. And then there's the, you know, you fight for your belts. So, you know, I was always aware of how much work is required by doing rugby. Okay. And, and being involved with rugby, but I think judo took it to another level because just some of those guys like sleep on the tatami, they'll, they'll train in the morning, sleep on the tatami, wake up, train in the afternoon, eat some food, sleep in the tatami, and then they've got sparring at night. So that was a huge, that was a huge, did it reinforce it? Did it just really wake position is and how unimportant strength and conditioning can be, if I can say that. So yeah, I did my, my first, my first judo to fight to find out, you know, what it's all about after six months of training, I, I don't know. And I was against the black belt and I was yellow belt, which, I think in, in BJJ terms, it's like a white belt with a three or four tab, three, two mm -hmm. tabs. And I was, in the, I was in the best shape of my life. I was like, I was like, oh, you know, I, I say best shape is in body composition. I'm stronger now, but I, I was strong. Everything was good. Okay. Perfect preparation from SSC point of view. I go in with my yellow belt. This black belt is like feeling me out, feeling me out. Good movement. You know, he's, he's an old boy. Who's won British Championships, but he's 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 just there. He's just it's social judo for him. Okay, I'm there, like ready to fight. He feels me out. Ninety seconds, boom, ciao. I'm I'm thrown flat on my back with force, uh, really good force, and I'm knackered. I'm like ninety seconds, and I'm like feeling sick. This guy's just like, give me give me a hand up. Yeah. <laughs> like, mm, okay. The skill acquisition was really highlighted to me then, and that going through that process you know helped my judo and i think the, the philosophies of judo really influenced my personality and, and my approach in snc and doing bjj to, to circle back to that i could talk all day about grappling so i'm sorry circle back to really there's not a lot of adults that are doing judo everyone kind of the thing about judo is there's still a power element to judo because you're, you're on you're on your feet mm -hmm. by going to the ground you, you take that away really so bjj is a bit more friendly i would say to new I know obviously there's, 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 there's levels to, okay, but you remove power. Um, mm -hmm. So a wee guy can be a big guy because that's what, that's the original sort of idea. You're using your legs more than your arms. You, you know, a wee guy can be a big guy. Awesome. So when I came to Italy, I was like, and I, I've entered some tournaments before, like open grappling tournaments, just to see how my judo had gone. But that's where I sort of kicked on with BJJ because I saw that there wasn't that much judo around here, but there was, there was, there was a lot of BJJ. And I think the, 
the same principles apply that I learned from judo to BJJ with the skill acquisition, the patience when you're in competition because I'm competing. Although I've, I've goosed, uh, I'm a bit injured just now, but there's the preparation, which is for me is, is the, the, the philosophy of Kaizen, which is taken from Japanese philosophy just around um, making daily improvement on whatever, whatever your focus is. So for me, that strength and conditioning, that's really important. And then when you're actually competing and when you're in the moment where you need to be in the moment, being present, the mushen, if I'm saying that correctly, if I'm not, I apologize, is where you're kind of free-minded, you're open, you've got all your training, you know, everything's done, you just need to be present and react. And that, I think, going through that process has helped me understand some of the guys' mindset when, when they need to play. And the fact that and what I'm going to do now and let you talk is on game day, the s and just shut up, get out mm-hmm. of the way, support the team. Yeah, I, I have dialed that back a lot as a as an actual rugby coach as well. Like, okay. it's, and, and I think that's a little influence from Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but it's just, you know, yeah, you've got all the tools. Me shouting isn't going to help you. It's just going to overwhelm you a little bit more. And, you know, what I'm seeing might even be wrong. And, and that's one of the things I actually... I don't like as much about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is in competition. Like there is a g- good deal of coaching on the mats. Now, they'll tell you exactly what to do. Yeah. Like, and I think, I don't know, I don't like it, but it's, it's here, it's there and it's there. I don't think it's going to change, but I don't, I personally don't like it. Like the whole point is that, you know, if you're, if it's one on one battle, if you've then got a coach in the corner who sees a leg that's sneaking somewhere that it's not supposed to be, or someone's getting a sneaky grip. Calling that out, it's like I don't know. I don't. I don't. I think it should be mano e mano. You know. I, I don't yeah, like. I, and I think what you said about as far as like being in the moment is 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 huge. As far as like just getting your skills down. And everyone knows. Anyone that's listening that's grappled. It's when you're a white belt. It's, it's you know BJJ is like absolutely one of the best things that you can do for your fitness. And then the better you get, <laughs> the, the less work it is. And now I'm like I'm a purple belt, and I, I can just. I'll go with white or blue belt sometimes and, and they'll be, they'll go so hard and I'll just be relaxed. And, you know, maybe I'll only, I won't get as much success as I could do if I was trying really hard, but I'm just practicing my skills and I'm practicing my reactions. And I think that's a big influence that I've had as far as like getting, we love re- getting, you know, we can, we can really measure progress quite well in the gym because we've got weights, we've got volumes, we've got things to track, body composition, everything like that. When it comes to rugby skills and stuff, it's a lot more difficult to quantify. You know, you're not even with like things that you could you could potentially quantify how far you pass it or how far you kick it, but that's still not really relevant, particularly when you're talking about like game sense. And we spoke about like agility as well. You can measure how far someone can do the the T test or whatever, but whether that means shit for their ability to to break through the line and find a gap or make a tackle against someone that's stepping like that no that, that doesn't it doesn't work like that so there is yeah. something to be said about getting lots of reps in of just different aspects of rugby and i think that's something that i really took from jiu-jitsu i'm like the, like there's you got brown and black belts that have been doing this for 10 years and they're still just working basic triangle mechanics and it's the same thing when you look at professional rugby players like you'll get that's all the top scrum halves fly halves whatever they're doing their kicks they're doing their basic passing they're doing all those drills and then you look at the amateurs and you know they're, they're there 15 minutes early for training and they're just sort of standing around passing the ball around in a circle with their with their strong hand and doing whatever you know mm-hmm. i think that's if if we can get if you can move that across and again you do that for jujitsu as well where people will just you know every open mat ends up just being a randori rather than working some some position specific stuff you know yeah, there's the, the, we're humans at the end of the day. We want to do the stuff that we like and that we're already good at. But if you can work on your weaknesses, you can work on your skills. It's in the moment, it's probably less fun, but it's, I think, long term, a lot more rewarding. 